You didn't get to go. Um, it happens once a year. It's an excellent chance to see what other people are doing in the city with their chickens. And also, um, I have started my own side. I have my own business, and I do IT consulting. But I'm doing also um, funny farm industry. Anything to do with urban gardening. I just I like having resources that are automated and easy to get to access information. So that's where picking chicken comes in. That's the first endeavor going on. Um, that being said, I want to also go ahead and introduce um, our, our two chicken tractor uh, company vendors who are here so that they can talk a little about what they do and their background. We'll start here with Cassie. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Uh, I am a chicken owner. I've had backyard chickens in, uh, in an urban situation since 1998. And, um, and I uh, moved to Austin about a year and a half ago and could not move my chicken coop from Houston. And so I started looking around for chicken coops. Uh, I bought one, but I really wasn't satisfied with it. So I started thinking about all the people who raise chickens and the options that are available here and thought, well, maybe there's room for some other types of coops. I know that, uh, you know, mobile chicken coops have a whole lot of mobile coops, but there are people who have situations where they want a more standard, stable coop. Uh, the tractor that I brought can be used in both situations, either stable where it is, or you can move it around the yard. Um, anyway, I'll be here to answer questions. Thanks, Michelle, for inviting me. You're welcome. Thank you, Patsy. We also have Josh with Mobile Chicken Coop, and I'll let Josh introduce himself. Hi, I'm uh, Josh Hudgens, and I'm the owner of Mobile Chicken Coops. Uh, we're based out of Burnett, Texas, and I've had backyard chickens since about 1978. Uh, we lived off of Lamar and Runberg when that was outside of Austin, just about. And uh, so I've had chickens since I was three years old, uh, and have raised chickens ever since. And got tired of cleaning out chicken coops, and said there's got to be a better way, especially raising a lot more birds. And so we started developing our mobile line, um, still selling chickens primarily, and then had people interested in our coops. And so we started uh, building and selling some of our coops. Uh, we've got about 20 products in our in our product line, uh, both mobile, stationary. Uh, we do a lot of conversions, uh, site builds, uh, place stage rebuilding, place stage rebuilding barns, all of those kind of things. Plus we sell chickens. Uh, in springtime we have some waterfowl, um, guineas, uh, turkeys, I'm fixing to get an order of turkeys in. So we've got everything, including our own line of feed that we have custom milled. So we can set up a complete package for you to help you get started uh, from the coop, chickens, feed, feeders, waters, the whole nine yards. So I've got some, some uh, information here and some discount cards as well. If anybody's interested, feel free to stop talk to me. Thank you. Okay, that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is we're going to have a short talk on the, guard, the aspect of gardening with chickens. We'll take questions as we go. And then there'll be time for questions and answers after as well. And time to visit and ask questions freely. I wanted to get a feel for who's here today. How many of you have either now or have raised chickens in the past? Let me see. Okay. And if I'm looking, just I think I counted right. How many have it? Okay. So it's about half and half, more or less. Perfect. Well, what we're going to do is go down some list of, the, like I said, gardening with chickens. I gave you the handout. I'm going to go down that. Feel free if something doesn't make sense as we go to ask or wait till the end and do that. Um, and we'll just get started. So I told you a little about what I'm involved in. My involvement in chickens. I got, I got maybe two, three years ago. Uh, well, eight years ago we moved to five acres. And my husband and I, that's my husband over there taking a photo, had talked about we wanted a garden. And we wanted a good garden, and, but we also wanted it to have something symbiotic going with it. We looked into guinea, guinea hens and guinea fowl and we just kept saying yeah that's what we're going to do and then time passed and if, if this were a tv show you would see you know the winter where the tree went from hope having leaves to none and so forth so years and years later we finally got moving into having the chickens or or to doing the garden we put up the deer proof fence went forward 
with the guineas we had the lovely opportunity to hear Carol Ann Sale with Boggy Creek Farm and she is, if you haven't ever heard her she has a wonderful well she has an organic garden in East Austin that sells commercially she also has um, a wonderful newsletter that centers around chickens that you can subscribe to she convinced us we needed not only guinea fowl but chicken so we started with four chickens four guinea fowl and thought we'd get started and see what happens today we have more closer to 30. <laughs> it just, it's, a, it's grown into not only guinea fowl and chickens, um, but also ducks that we raise. So we just really enjoy having them. They really do add benefits. Um, that being said, who would like to start with saying, how do, what do you know about how chickens help with gardening? Anyone? Yes, manure, composting, anything else? Soil aeration? Sea bug, that's right. Your best insect control naturally. Their ideas. Those are pretty. Those are all very true. Um, other, I, uh, other things they do that are less tangible, but you're going to get exercise when you have your chickens. They're going to give you more incentive to go out there, and be in the garden and, and help them find bugs or move around. You're also going to have great entertainment, as uh, Caroline Sale says. Chick TV goes on for free. It's a lot better than what you'll find on a lot of times on the TV. And of course, while this isn't directly gardening you get the benefit of having meat and eggs for your family depending on what how you use them and you're not going to find anything fresher than chicken eggs and patsy brought some chicken eggs here you can see just a lovely variety you get different colors green cream white and you'll never see a more yellow you'll you'll never find one in a store that you can find as fresh as what you can get from your own backyard Ooh, we can crack one open. I might get something to crack it into, but but uh, yeah, that'd be great. So you guys can see what we're talking about. Bright yellow, especially with all this lushness that we have going on. Um, composting. Specifics. I want to get into the specifics of how they can compost. Um, your average hen, size hen, also produces one cubic foot of manure every six months. So that's a fair amount of manure going on. Chicken poop is high in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And straight out, um, I, it is hot, and I wouldn't apply it to a garden. Uh, it needs time to, uh, to mellow, to say it best. Uh, and in composting, you, you have your greens and your browns. The, the chicken poop is the, the green part. The brown you can also get from the chicken side through their bedding. You can have use whatever you use for their bedding, leaves or... or hay or straw or um, pine shavings, some kind of shavings like that. What you don't want to use is cedar. Do not use cedar shavings. It's very bad for the respiratory and uh, toxic to chickens that way. Um, you can also find that the compost that you get is a good soil amendment. They, um, it adds the organic matter and increases the water holding capacity for your soil. Uh, generally speaking, in composting, you usually have uh, one part brown to two parts green. Because chicken manure is so high in nitrogen, you may find other ratios. I would experiment and see what works for you. It might be one to one. It might even be a two to one instead of a one to two mixture. Um, but you can kind of do that. It's, it's, it's a little bit trial and error. Every chicken's different and every gardening situation and composting what you're adding is different. So that all comes together. Um, and as I already mentioned, and I put as a note, never ever use cedar shaving. Um, it just, it's just not uh, good for the chicken. Okay, we talked about bug control. Being more specific, um, you'll find they will eat anything and everything bug related, almost anything and everything. I've noticed they don't eat pill bugs, but for my, my chickens at least, but they'll eat the worms, grubs, other small bugs going around. They'll, have, they'll eat and kill your snakes. Um, they'll eat fire ants, but I, I caution there, just keeping in mind, if you had a whole colony of fire ants that came and they could overpower your chicken, and that isn't a, a viable situation. But if you have a one or two or three kind of coming, crawling around, the chicken can come and eat, you know, selectively at, at a slow moving, so to speak, conveyor belt rate. So you've got a lot, they'll eat rodents or they'll help kill rodents. They, they're, a, they're a fierce little crowd and I've seen them scare away cats and do everything else. So. They're um, really beneficial. And we'll get into a little later how you can use some of that to um, that force to 
strategically have it with the guard. 